Step 2. Module Summary I hope that you had fun on our journey in introducing the basic concepts of quantum internet and that you learned a lot. The fact is that quantum networks are on their way. Lessons learned from classical networks are a great starting point. The internet did not happen overnight. Uh, as the hardware develops for quantum networks, so must the software. At some point for classical internet, the hardware was sufficient enough that really it was the software that, that determined the quality of the networks and of the internetworks. Therefore, for quantum networks, the hardware and software, they need to be developed in tandem or together. And also good architecture is very important for the longevity, security and management of the network. So quantum networks can borrow a lot from classical solutions and we try to demonstrate it throughout this module. But at the same time, quantum networks differ in some respects quite substantially from classical networks. Classical networks are all about forwarding packets. Quantum networks are all about distributed computation. So these new, new problems require also new approaches. This module was a gentle introduction to important issues in quantum networking, what tools do we have to tackle them, as well as a mixture of cutting-edge research. So let's have a quick look back at the module. We started with three lessons on error management generations of quantum repeaters. We talked about the first, second and third generations and how they are different from each other. And then we concentrated on two ways of managing errors. One is entanglement purification, used in the first generation of quantum repeaters, and the second one was uh, quantum error correction, used in the second and third generation of quantum repeaters. We then moved on to lectures about quantum hardware that's used in quantum networking. And we started by talking about flying and stationary qubits. Flying qubits were used for communication. They were the single photons traveling between network nodes, while stationary qubits were the quantum memories uh, used to store information and hold them for a long time. We then talked about link architecture. We saw that setting up uh, entangled links between neighboring nodes is the fundamental first stepping stone in quantum networks. But there's many different ways of how we can go about it. And we highlighted that in our link architecture lesson. And finally, we concluded this about thinking what sort of nodes will be, participate in quantum networking. We talk about various end nodes and their various capabilities, such as computational nodes or quantum memory nodes or measurement only nodes. We also talked about the important uh, support nodes that are used to generate quantum uh, states or entangled photon pairs, as well as base state analyzers that are used for um, establishing link level entanglement. Equally important are repeater nodes, first generation and second generation repeater nodes. After hardware, we started looking at networks. And here, this was a mixture of classical networking as well as new quantum networking. We started with thinking about what types of networks exist classically. We started very small with system area networks and system interconnects and went through local LER network, metropolitan area network, up to wide area networks. Then we were thinking, how can we set up connections between two distant parties in a quantum network? We talked about connection protocols before moving on to our lesson about routing and multiplexing, where we're thinking, how can we choose an appropriate path through a vast and different and potentially heterogeneous network or internetwork? And how can we share the resources of such a network if multiple users are trying to communicate together? Finally, we brought all of this together into a lesson about quantum recursive network architecture, where we borrow an interesting and very attractive notion of recursive networks from classical networking and try to apply it in the context of quantum internet. Then we moved on to applications. Here we concentrated mainly above about security and sensing applications and we dedicated two lessons to talking about the quantum cloud and how potentially um, resource-limited clients can interact with powerful quantum servers and perform delegated quantum computation without revealing the input, the output or the computation itself to the server. 
And finally, in the last two lessons, we looked at various testbeds and various experimental uh, implementations of the basic primitives of quantum networking. We talked about how NV centers can be used to set up a three-node network and perform teleportation between non-neighboring nodes. We looked at a similar experiment with two nodes, but this time using quantum ion trap memory qubits. We also looked at using satellites um, to establish long distance um, entanglement between two ground stations, as well as performing teleportation across a very large distance between islands and the Canary Islands. And the final lesson was dedicated uh, to uh, quantum networking efforts here in Japan, and particularly about the Quantum Internet Task Force, the QITF, and their efforts to build a testbed here in Japan. So I hope you enjoyed this module and you learned a lot. And hopefully I'll see you again next in the next year's module. See you.